Hey guys, welcome back to Father and Son Investing. Sorry we've taken a little bit of a sabbatical on making some of our videos. I went off to Idaho to visit my daughter, her husband, and my little grandson. And I also went to visit my parents who are pushing 80. Uh, but we are back and we are excited to make some more videos. In the 2011 movie Moneyball, Brad Pitt stars as the general manager of the Oakland Athletics, my hometown baseball team. I was born in Oakland, California. Uh, stars as Billy Bean, uh, who was the general manager for the Oakland Athletics. The team was having a really difficult time, but it chronicles the 2002 year. Now, it got the Oakland Athletics team got changed around when an Ivy League graduate, Peter Brand, came along. It was his first job, and he was a whiz kid when it came to mathematics and analytics. Now, this was very new for baseball, of course. Nowadays, it's just routine. But this was a trend-setting phenomenon, essentially, where they took mathematics and computing and statistics and averages and used those to generate a baseball team that could actually compete within the major league system. In the same year that Moneyball was coming out, there was a computer debut on the game show Jeopardy. It was IBM Watson. And Watson was going to take on two of Jeopardy's legendary champions. Watson stood between Ken Jennings and Brad Reuter. At least its avatar stood between them. The computer was actually in another room. Not, nobody was allowed to be connected to the internet, including, including IBM Watson. Watson was able to perform remarkably during that show, so much so that on the first day it absolutely destroyed the two legendary Jeopardy! champions. On day two of the contest, Ken Jennings was performing very well against Watson as they neared the end, but Watson was able to pull a, day, a daily double and uh, eventually ended up winning that round as well. The final total for two days was Watson $77,000 with the closest competitor at $24,000. Watson destroyed these two legendary champions. Now, why am I telling you all of this? Well, if a computer can beat people at Jeopardy, what can it do, a supercomputer like Watson, what can it do for investing? We're going to talk about some ETFs today that are using artificial intelligence as a means to increase their earnings more than what the uh, S&P 500 or their other indexes that they are tracking uh, generally do. Now, the first commercial use of Watson was in 2013, so two years later after its debut on Jeopardy, a hospital in the United States started using it to help doctors make the best decisions for delivering treatments for cancer patients. Since then, Watson has gone on to be used in multiple different applications in business and in other areas of our complex world. But we're going to talk about the finance end of this and how Watson or other artificial intelligences are improving the returns of investors. A company called Equibot utilizes Watson as its artificial intelligence powering two ETFs. One is called AIEQ, which is based on the United States stock market, and one is called AIIQ, and that is based on the international stock market. Let's just take a peek at both of these. So for AIEQ, the company ETFMG has partnered with Equibot to create AIEQ as the ticker symbol. This is the first actively managed ETF fully run by an artificial intelligence as the method for stock selection. This harnesses the power of IBM Watson for machine learning, sentiment, and natural language processing. Now, how does it go about doing this? Well, it actually looks at 6,000 United States companies, and it checks them daily for these different types of signals. So, 34 daily signals in the financial area, 23 daily signals in the news area, 17 daily signals in management, and 18 daily signals in what it calls macro. It applies deep learning to all of these. Now, one of the things about deep learning is to be able to take unstructured data and make sense of it. 
So imagine if it has access to a satellite that's passing over a certain part of the world and it can look at the farmland. And then imagine that it has access to another different part of the world and it looks at a market where some of those farm crops might be distributed. And then imagine that it has access to the banks or the stores or the foot traffic or start to piece together all of these bits of unstructured data. And IBM Watson then uh, starts to recognize patterns and comes up with predictions. Now in this article in TWST.com, the CIO and founder of Equibot told an interesting story about how this IBM Watson performed during the start of the pandemic in regards to his ETF. He had this to say, to provide some context, a quite interesting time was the beginning of the pandemic. We would be ingesting information related to coronavirus and the COVID pandemic back in December of 2019. But if we think about artificial intelligence at the highest level, it is pattern recognition. The system at that time was diversifying into consumer staples, names like Costco and Walmart, and was getting active and increasing exposure into a variety of different pharmaceutical names, things like Gilead, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson. Now, it didn't get it 100% right, in part because the magnitude of a pandemic had never been experienced by IBM Watson's computer. So, uh, it only had some more mild infections, SARS and MERS, to be able to compare to. But what it did do was take all of that information that it learned during a pandemic and applies that now to the future. One interesting thing that some of that data Watson started scouring was in clinicaltrials.gov. So imagine the computer that's running through all of these reports of clinical trials to be able to come up with companies who might be successful at creating a vaccine and telling its humans to invest. If you're interested in this fund, here are its top 10 holdings. About 4% of it is kept in Alphabet, which is the parent company of Google. You'll also see some other well-known companies like Tesla and MongoDB, Square, and Carvana. You can also download the full list by clicking on here where it says download all holdings. If you want to download this CSV file from the uh, company's website, you'll see that there are 91 stocks that are within AIEQ. Now, how is AIEQ doing compared to the broad U.S. market, which is what it's trying to replicate? Not quite the S&P 500, but it is looking at 6,000 again of the companies within the United States and then trying to pick the ones that will look the best for appreciation in the stock price. Now we're going to use Webull to be able to compare the two. The AIEQ is the uh, green and red uh, bar chart here and the S&P 500 uh, is a, this blue line. For the most part the AIEQ and the Watson supercomputer behind it has been beating the S&P 500. There was a time here in uh, May of this year where they were roughly equivalent, and since then, the AIEQ and Watson have pulled away again from the S&P 500, just about 10% more, 9% more than what the S&P 500 is doing. Now, I also mentioned AIIQ, that is the international version of AIEQ. Its index is the FTSE developed all cap, excluding the US index. And we can see here that over the, since 2018, that AIIQ, powered by Watson, is also beating its index significantly. Now, this is not the only company that is utilizing supercomputers and artificial intelligence to increase their investing returns. There's another company out of Korea called Kraft, Q-R-A-F-T, that also has at least four ETFs that are utilizing the power of artificial intelligence. Those ETFs listed before you here uh, look at the U.S. large cap, they look at U.S. large cap momentum, they look at U.S. high dividend, and they look at U.S. next value. Now, Kraft makes an explanation about how their computer does some of this. Quite honestly, it's beyond my understanding of uh, computers and mathematics. But essentially, they have their computer doing the data processing, doing the research, and then doing the order execution. The computer takes care of all of that.
If we look back at QRFT and how it's done over the last 12 months, we'll see that it's just a little bit better, about 3% better than what the S&P 500 return has been. Now, if we take a look at AMOM and we compare it to its S&P equivalent, which is SPOM, they're both momentum uh, stock uh, indexes, or it's tracking that index, uh, we see that it's doing better, far better than its index. SPMO is at 27% over the last 12 months increase, and AMOM is at 53% over the last 12 months. Similarly, let's take a look at HDIV, which is intended to provide dividend income. Over the last 12 months, it is also beating its index, the S&P 500 uh, high dividend. Uh, the SPYD is at 1.9%, essentially, and HDIV is at 13.4%, so significantly beating its index. Finally, let's take a look at NVQ. This is the value investing version of this AI-enhanced ETF. They are looking for the intangibles that uh, might be included in value investing as well as trying to get a gauge if the company is undervalued in relation to its fundamentals. Now, they don't list a index that they're following on their website, but let's just take a look on Webull to see how the stock has been performing. So this ETF, again, NVQ, over the last year is up just shy of 33%. Now, if we go back to the question that was asked on the title of this video, is a computer better than you at investing? I think we'll start to see that the answer is yes, at least in my opinion. I know that it's better than I am. Now, I don't intend to invest all of my money in AI-enhanced ETFs. Part of the fun in, of investing is doing some of this on your own, doing some of the research and learning about companies. Uh, if you just leave it all up to a computer, I'm not sure you're gonna learn too much. So. I'm not going to invest all my money. Besides, they don't have a very long track record. These ETFs have only been around just for a few years, and I will be interested to see how they do over a decade or two. Now, just one more point to try to show how these computers are very good at investing. This article in MarketWatch details how a artificial intelligence was able to accurately predict the price movements of Tesla before they happened and sell and buy the stock. In the article, they detail how the computer did. It says that uh, its outstanding achievement was correctly anticipating the price moves in the electric vehicle maker Tesla. The fund sold off all of its shares of Tesla at the beginning of August of 2020 before it fell 14% in September and another 10% in October. Then AMOM, uh, bought uh, the dip in Tesla, reinvesting in Tesla in November, and loaded up on its shares until January, at which time it made up almost 7% of the portfolio. Then, before the start of February, it sold off its entire Tesla holdings, and then the uh, share price was down 12% after it sold, and AMOM has yet to buy into Tesla again. What else was the computer behind AMOM doing? Well, it bought into Target, which was up 3%. Uh, during the month of April. Uh, you see here that its five uh, biggest stock additions were Autodesk, ServiceNow, Monster Beverage, Target, and O'Reilly Automotive. Just, uh, you know, as a gee whiz, what did the computer decide to get rid of? Well, it dumped NVIDIA, KLA Corp, Generac Holdings, Zebra Technologies, and Home Depot. How are these five stocks doing if we look at them in Webull since uh, the beginning of April? Well, we see that it didn't make such a good choice with NVIDIA, but some of the others, it was relatively decent, including KLA Corp, which essentially is only up 2%. I hope this video was informative for you as you learned about AI-enhanced ETF and investing. If it was, please give us a thumbs up. Those thumbs up are really critical to YouTube's algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed, we'd love to have you as a subscriber. Please leave some comments down below if you would. Uh, even if you make negative comments, I am not going to try to uh, edit those and uh, discard them unless they're full of expletives. Sometimes we get some comments that are kind of derogatory or mean-spirited, and if uh, you leave those comments, I'll let them stay, but I'm probably not going to answer you. Uh, kind of paraphrasing George Bernard Shaw, never wrestle with a pig. You just get dirty, and besides, the pig likes it. So... I just tend not to answer those derogatory, mean-spirited comments. But everything else I would love to answer back. Until next time, enjoy your investing.